All right, so of course it's one thing to say that something works, it's another to actually show it in practice. So uh, here, let me show you what we're dealing with today. Yeah. out for a little evening walk and happened upon one of my favorite sites which is when you happen upon a swarm. Now some of you may remember me talking about some of my unconventional swarm traps and specifically the one dealing with using recycled styrofoam coolers. If you don't remember watch this for just a quick reminder. Another DIY option. Why not upcycle, right? So sometimes you'll see things in Facebook Marketplace that you go, hmm, I bet I could do something in beekeeping with that. I'm not really sure what. Well, this definitely falls into one of those categories. So I've got a couple of sizes of these here. Um, these are just old foam coolers. And those have a very practical purpose if you're looking to catch bees. I've got two of these right here. Now this, just like that last one, this is coolers. But one thing that I do want to compare, so you'll notice in terms of volume, there's a lot of similarity overall in volume. The only difference is, whereas this one's set up a bit more like a deep hive body, the other is set up a bit more as if you had a couple of five frame nukes. So this one, Basically what I did is I had a couple, this is a couple of those styrofoam coolers. So this one down here, they're already designed to stack. So I came through with just a pocket knife and I cut the lip off of the bottom one. Then I took the top one and I went on the inside and I actually cut the bottom out of it. So if you can see all the way down. So I cut the bottom out of this one right here. I hot glued them together and then just for good measure, just sealed it off with a little bit of duct tape around the outside as well. You can see once again, smearing the inside with a combination of that wax and propolis. And I used that same sort of a skewer idea up here as well. This one I like actually a little bit better because it allows room for the bees to come in, travel up, start building the comb up in the top and it still gives them plenty of vertical space. This for whatever reason, even in terms of keeping uh, resource nukes in the operation, bees really like to build comb in a vertical space like this with a five over five, much more efficiently than even necessarily building a 10 frame hive body all the way across. So I really like this structure and I don't need a whole lot up here because I've got those few skewers and it gives them plenty of space. If the bees do decide to build inside of that lid, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, but ideally, because they've got three places to actually start building, they shouldn't need to do that to begin with. Um, and by the time that you find them, I mean, you shouldn't have enough comb to fill up this bucket. If it is, you're not really checking your swarm traps very often. But once we're done, once again, the lid just press fits really nice right there. Just a little bit of duct tape and another ratchet strap sort of a thing to put this up. All right. So, of course, it's one thing to say that something works. It's another to actually show it in practice. So uh, here, let me show you what we're dealing with today. I keep talking about this idea of urban and subur suburban swarm catches. So you can see out here where I am, just behind a housing development. Just a little country cross street through here. I tend to believe that this provides a service. So you can see over here, this tree right here, that's what we're gonna check out. So this is just a perfectly mundane hackberry tree out here. And you can see over here, a neighbor said I could put this on her property. And uh, there you can see the swarm. And I mentioned specifically, like we're not necessarily looking for monster swarms. This definitely isn't a monster, but it is a football. And you can just see right here, those beautiful calm bees just glistening in the sun. There's the little hole that goes into that cooler. And 
this is the one. It's just a couple of styrofoam coolers up here with a little bit of wax and propolis on the inside. We're gonna see if we can get these girls in a box and take them home for the night. There's lots of tall grass down below here, so I'm gonna try and keep them from getting in that as much as I'm able. So I put a little sheet on the ground and those of you who've watched me before know that even though swarms are the most gentle of bees nor under normal circumstances, I still tend to follow general safety protocols. As I've said before, I've got a day job at 8 a.m. every day that requires me to be visible, and uh, I prefer to avoid any kind of out-of-the-norm or surprising mishaps that may result in me walking into a business meeting with a swollen face or swollen hands or not being able to type while I'm doing creative work. I work in marketing, by the way. So, I'm gonna see if we can gently coax these girls into a box. I don't have any available comb right now, but this box definitely smells like propolis and wax and it has frames so my hope would be try and get them to kind of break cluster and go down into the box. Trying to be gentle. Huh. And this is the funny thing, when you see this right here, they've actually begun drawing comb right under this styrofoam. So they already decided this is where they're going to put up shop, which makes sense why, even though this is a swarm, I've got a few bumping me because technically they have a home they're trying to protect. Technically. Oops. Spotted a few accidentally right there. This part we'll just give a little watch and see whether the bees here go that way or whether the bees down there come this way. And I can already tell you these girls are marching down 
to join their compadres. Alright, and I see basically no bees trying to recluster over here. Which the thing that really works to my advantage here is that all of the scent, even where they were clustered, the queen pheromone, was all on the bottom of this box, the styrofoam tub. And so if they were gonna cluster anywhere after flying around in the air, it would be right here. But we're not even really getting too much of that. to the bottom of that do that for just a second so that it forces them to go to a more specific spot there's just a few bees back there finding that opening to get back in and uh once they're in there, I'll close it down. I like to use, as I've mentioned before, these boxes with an easy jar hole at the top. And I put just a, a little Reflectix insulator on top and uh, just to help the smaller swarms to stay nice and warm. But I'll put a jar feeder on it still tonight just to get them an early start on it. And this box also has that big wide open screen on the bottom, which allows them to ventilate and it also buys me a little bit of time because I don't have a frame with brood to put in here and I always like to start with one frame of brood just because that's the only thing that I've found 100% of the time to make sure that a swarm when I catch it stays anchored to that box uh, but I don't have one handy today so instead I'm gonna have to just coax them by basically keeping them inside the box so with that I need to give them food and I need to give them plenty of ventilation because this week is supposed to be sunny and it's supposed to be mid 70s to mid 80s all week long. So at most, maybe I'll give it a couple of days with them in there before we open it up. Um, not my normal preferred way. All right, so then uh, I'm gonna close this up and the last thing we have to do is wash, rinse, repeat. After that, we still get to enjoy an absolutely beautiful sunset. <laughs> 